Place.com slash radio. Pat Gray is here on the Blaze Radio Network. Ah, another jam-packed day. Filled with fun and frivolity. Thanks for being with us. 888-900-3393. Also, uh, Pat Unleashed on Twitter. So yesterday, the stock market uh, was rattled after there were reports that the Pentagon had been attacked. Uh Uh-oh. Apparently, there was some sort of AI image of an explosion at the U.S. Pentagon and that caused a $500 billion market cap swing. Oh, no, bro. What is Half happening? Half a trillion dollars. Okay, see. Wow. We're going to have to rein this stuff in, man. Yeah. Jeez. It is a new world. That's not good. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, this AI thing, that's not going to be a problem. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Don't even worry about it. Wow. And we're just getting started on that. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're this is just the beginning, Wait, and man. already it's causing problems. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, I don't want the government involved, but we're gonna have to be mm-hmm. more discerning when we're uh, looking at this stuff. That's yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, I mean, I, a, <laughs> half a trillion dollars. That's not good. That's not good. We're entering a dangerous world. Right? Yeah. Oh man. Jeez, I think we're in the dangerous world. Yeah. Uh, getting deeper by the day. Also, a U-Haul truck crashed into barriers near the White House. There's a suspect in custody. Oh, so this is real. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, okay. this is real. Okay. This okay. is not AI. Okay. And uh, it's not set up by the government at all. <clears throat> why, would you, why would you throw that in there? Look at the Nazi flag uh, laying on the ground. Isn't that perfectly placed? Uh-huh. Look at this... Stop with the psyops. I can't take it. So when it it crashed, the flag flew out of the truck? Is that what happened? I Did the suspect say, wait, 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 before you arrest me. Let me put my Nazi flag down first. Okay. Then you can take a photo of the area. Stop. (laughs) I want it known that I'm a neo-Nazi. Okay? And then put this flag out, and I hate Joe Biden. I hate him. Government tries so hard to push a narrative. It's so ridiculous. That is just insane. (laughs) Carefully placed Nazi flag right near the wreck. Spread out beautifully. Perfectly. For all to see. Yeah. It just happened to fall like that. I don't know if he was holding it out the window. (laughs) Was it attached to the window? And when he crashed, it fell down perfectly on the ground? (laughs) Who knows? I tell you. <sighs> okay. The truck crashed on the northern side of Lafayette Square at about 10 p.m. Uh, last night, shortly before 10. Secret Service uniformed division officers detained the driver of a box truck after the vehicle collided with security barriers on the north side of Lafayette Square. There were no injuries to any Secret Service or White House personnel. Mm. And... And is, is there another sentence that hmm. says they released him three blocks away and said, hey, see you tomorrow at work, Joe? <laughs> no? no, they, they left that, okay. that sentence out. All right, well. Uh, let me see the picture again, because I, I, I love the fact that the Nazi flag is laid out so nice. That's just, <laughs> come on. <laughs> come on. Where did that come from? And there's really no explanation. It's just the implication. Yeah, this is... Uh, it came shooting out the back end of the truck, and then it was blown by the wind just right in front of the, like at the side of the truck, oh. so that it would be right in the middle of the picture. <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable. What is the deal with that? At least provide the explanation. Uh, the Nazi flag was attached to the driver's side window. Something. Mm-hmm. Something. Okay, well, I mean, another day, another psyop. Yep. Duh. Ridiculous. Man, oh man. Uh, and then in Rome, we had some uh, eco-terrorists try to ruin a fountain. Mm. Um, they turned the water 
they turned the uh, the blue water of the Trevi Fountain in central Rome black with diluted charcoal. Idiots. Wow. That's sad. That thing's beautiful, yeah. too. Yeah, it is really beautiful. It's so big, man. That is a... <clears throat> yeah. uh, not, not from this angle, but, man, when, I don't know if they... Anyway, I just... Uh, these people are insane. Yep. And insane. nobody does anything? Really? Not one of you idiots could get in there and stop these morons from doing this? I mean, there's a lot Where's of... Where's Italian there? police with their bullets? Yeah, they got their... Shoot them. God, were they arrested? Yeah. Hopefully. Mm -hmm. That's just pathetic. Yeah. I, I was reading a bunch of comments underneath, and I, I'm, I'm ashamed to say I I had some of the same thoughts. <laughs> like, where are the Italian police with their guns? Why aren't they being shot right now? Wait, you're just ashamed to say that? Just put a stop to it. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> should they be killed for it? Probably not, but they should definitely be stopped. Well, read the story there. I mean, the mayor says, I mean, congratulations on all the water you're going to waste now that we have to drain this and refill it, you morons. Yeah. That stupid ass. That did. So stupid. Ugh. Ten activists from the climate group Ultima uh, Generazione. Okay, last generation. Last generation. Entered the 18th century late Baroque fountain, uh -huh. holding a banner that said, let's not pay for fossil campaigns, <laughs> considering what is happening in Emilia-Romagna. Okay. Referring to the deadly flooding in northern Italy. I see. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's... That. All right. That's what's doing it. Our country is dying, other banners stated. Is it? Jeez. All the activists were arrested. They all face vandalism <laughs> charges. Luisa Regimenti, counselor for uh, personal, personnel, urban security, local police, and local authorities in the Lazio region, which includes Rome, condemned the act. In a written statement, she said that it was the umpteenth demonstrative act of eco-vandals that hit a symbol of Rome universally known uh, throughout the world. I mean, I, I think there's probably truth into your nation is dying. Um, basically every Western nation. I saw a video just a couple of days ago, ironically enough, of people walking through Rome, and it looked like Austin, you know, with the tents and the people camped really? out and stuff. Oh, was it wow. wasn't so much tents as it was just a bunch of um, uh, homeless people just lining the street, lining the sidewalks. They're like, wow, what a beautiful city this Jeez, Rome, Italy is. Wow. Yeah. So it's a 66,000-gallon uh, fountain, and it'll have to be emptied, and the dyed water will have to be thrown away, of course. Uh, this will involve a significant intervention. It will cost time, effort, water, yeah, I thought, uh, money. I thought you guys loved the water. About that. Right. I thought we were trying to conserve the water, but no, uh, you just wasted all that water. Huh. Morons. Hard to believe. Yeah. And yet, I mean, they do this kind of stuff all the time. Mm. And uh, yeah. people are just getting sick of it. People yeah, the, just want it to stop. Yeah, the eco freaks are out in full force, led, of course, by John Kerry, who's out there telling you that uh, your food is the problem. My we, food is the problem? Yeah, they never stop. Mm -hmm. They just do not stop with this insanity. He's uh, targeting agriculture as part of the uh, climate crusade. Good. Uh, <laughs> special presidential Good. envoy for climate, uh, John Kerry warned that the world can't tackle climate change without first addressing the agriculture sector's emissions. Here we go. Agenda 2030. Kerry lamented that agriculture production alone creates 33% of the world's total greenhouse gas emissions, arguing that reducing those emissions must be front and center <laughs> in the quest to defeat global warming. Uh, during remarks he made at the Department of Agriculture's Aim for Climate Summit. The former Secretary of State also touted the so-called climate smart agriculture as a potential solution. Food systems themselves contribute a significant amount of emissions just in the way in which we do things and the way we've been doing. <laughs> okay. uh, with a growing population, he said, on the planet, we just crossed the threshold of 8 billion fellow citizens around the world. Emissions from the food system alone are projected to cause another 
half a degree of warming by mid-century. Could have gotten to that 8 billion number sooner without the COVID vax, but mm. I digress. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kerry added that lives depend on world leaders and scientists developing the tools necessary to low, lower agriculture emissions. Overall, the global food system, which includes land use change, actual agricultural production, packaging, and waste management, generates about 18 billion tons of carbon dioxide per year. So I guess we just stop eating. Stop eating. That's You, you got it. Stupid You moron. got there. All right. We're proud of you. Just stop eating, you fat pigs. Or you can have bugs. Or there's bugs. You want some bugs? Mm, do I? <laughs> no. No, I really don't. Uh, I'd rather not eat, really. Than I'm with you. Oh, bugs. oh, I will I'd get rather them. not eat. Oh, I'll starve to death before I'm eating a creepy crawly. Shut up. In the U.S. alone, agriculture alone generates about 10, 000, 10% of uh, the total greenhouse gas emissions. The sector needs innovation now more than ever, Kerry said. Uh, we're facing record malnutrition at a time when agriculture more than any other sector is suffering from the impacts of the climate crisis. We're facing record malnutrition? Okay, that's just a flat-out lie. That is just a total and complete lie. We have more food on this planet, and we're feeding more people than has ever been the case. Did you eat healthy yesterday, Pat? Did I eat healthy? Yeah. Yes, I always eat healthy now. Okay, hold on a second. Hold on, let's rewind. Uh-huh. Let's say it was three months ago. <laughs> did you eat healthy yesterday, Pat? Uh, three months ago? No. See? Malnutrition. No, I did not. See? I didn't. Yep. That's not good. And that's I'm sure that's what they claim. I swear. Because we're not suck. eating, you know, uh, quinoa every meal and kale. <laughs> oh, jeez. Gun to your head. Mm-hmm. Quinoa or kale? <clears throat> Quinoa. Okay. Actually, just pull the trigger. I don't want either one of them. Oh, snap! Yeah, just pull the trigger. <laughs> it's just okay. ended. That's almost as bad as bugs. Ah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, these people are just ridiculous. Absolutely <sighs> well, insane. Well, the, the bad part, or the worst part of this, isn't that they make these declarations and uh, tell you how you need to live. They're, they're not whatsoever conforming to the rules that they're setting out for oh, you. Oh, yeah, right. Right. 100%. Uh, I, it, <laughs> you, you suppose John Kerry's a vegetarian? Oh, yeah. No way. No way is he a vegetarian. He can't even be bothered to, to wear a mask on a plane after telling everybody else to. Mm-hmm. He sure as hell isn't going to be eating bugs. Ugh. And... Fairly recently, he was taking private jets, too. You know, he claims that since he got this position, he hasn't been, which is a lie because we've, I mean, he's been caught taking private planes while he's been this climate czar. Uh, but I guess he's cut back on that l- lately. Has he? Supposedly. Okay. Well, that's good. But please, the guy is not serious. He he mm-hmm. doesn't He doesn't care about this planet. He doesn't care. You wouldn't be flying all over the world in any uh, plane, if you really believe the things that he supposedly believes. You could absolutely do everything you're doing now over the internet. Why wouldn't you do that? If you really believe that we're in this kind of crisis and that the temperature is going to go up another degree because we're eating food, <laughs> um, well, then you better be doing everything on Zoom. Every meeting you have worldwide should be done by, via Zoom. Or on the telephone. Who cares? Jeez. I can't take it. I tell you the hypocrites, man. Yep. It's amazing. Uh, all right. Let me tell you uh, about uh, about my Patriot Supply. It is time to be prepared. I mean, check out the headlines. Everywhere you look, things are just falling apart. We're, just, we're about to tell you about American cities that are absolutely falling apart. We'll get into that in a second. But uh, the smartest investment you can make right now is in your family's food security. The reality is you might not be able to find food when the next disaster strikes. John Kerry's coming for it. Yep. Plus, the supply chain problems uh, that are intermittent right now, they might be more than that at some point. And then you're really going to be sorry if you don't have a, a store of food. Grocery stores be empty because roads... Uh, will be closed. Trucks won't be able to make deliveries. And when that happens, you need emergency food in full supply. That's why I really urge you to just 
Get a three-month emergency food kit for My Patriot Supply. This is really the the bare minimum for you, I think. You get you through three months worth of disaster, and at that point, hopefully, things are getting back to normal, and uh, you know the supply chain has been reconnected, and you know food is back in the grocery stores. But this could get you through it. Also, when you order today, you'll save two hundred dollars on each kit that you need. Uh, having these kits means your family will stay fed while others stand in food lines. So don't delay this. Order your three-month emergency food kit. Save $200 per kit. And then once you're set with the three-month supply, you might consider even longer than that for, who knows, maybe a, a longer disaster. It's easy to order. Just go to preparewithpat.com. You'll get uh, fast and free shipping, too. Do this today, or you, you'll regret it, regret it tomorrow. Preparewithpat.com. This is Pat Gray Unleashed. So we've got some uh, random violence and lawlessness going on. It's becoming less cities. random. Mm -hmm. It's becoming less random, Pat. It's just every day, man. Check out this report from Los Angeles. Mm. A group of young males beating up the driver of a white pickup truck on Hill Street near 6th Street in downtown LA's Jewelry District mm. Thursday afternoon. Okay. Another one of the guys can be seen smashing the man's truck with his bike. The truck's windshield is left shattered. It was horrible. Horrible situation. Stressful. You know. The jeweler who captured the violence on mm, video God. describes the disturbing Jeez. altercation he witnessed while working on the 13th floor America, of the nearby office building. 2023. Gary, who doesn't want to reveal his last name, says he not. looked out the window when he heard the commotion and saw a bunch of young guys on bikes. Hmm. But when I got to the window, I seen probably about six or seven kids on bicycles. There you, was a, you saw. A, a white pickup truck you, parked you, out front. And I just seen somebody smashing the, the window with uh -huh. a bike. He says he then Jeez. noticed the driver of the truck was out on the sidewalk and the guys on the bikes start attacking him. Oh, Maybe they six or seven on Damn one. The, the, it's a full of jewelers down there. Jeez. And they Everybody just standing to around. the guy's yeah. aid and was able to break the fight up. And the guy was able to get into the truck and take off. The alleged assailants are then seen riding their bikes in the middle of the street, yeah. blocking traffic before taking off. Yeah. As sure. for what sparked the violence, Gary says he heard the driver hit one of the kids and tried to drive off, but got stuck in traffic. This is when they were able to catch up to him, you know, banging on his windows, banging on his truck, and then he pulled over and jumped out, and uh, he got worked. However, another jeweler reportedly mm. says the guys on their bikes were swerving yeah. in and out of traffic traffic still like they it. own the road yeah, still doing it. and the driver of the truck apparently honked at them after he was cut off in traffic jeez oh, i My mean gosh. that's how you resolve issues in america 2023 yep you just uh you just uh, a mob yeah it descends attacks on attacks a guy mhm mm jeez uh i don't know i mean that's just that's the american city now that's the mm -hmm. american mm -hmm. urban experience there's also a brawl that broke out at an amusement park in Chicago, so that's fun. Okay, okay. Here's that report. Look at that. All right, that's a good view, though. If you're gonna see, if you're gonna be there, you want to do this from the <laughs> Ferris wheel because yeah. you're up high and you're like, oh no, don't come down. Oh no, now I'm down here. But uh, yeah, that's just a. Uh, Jeez. It was just a fun day on the old Twitter feed. Mm -hmm. It was just one urban brawl after another. And a little street racing uh, <laughs> terror in Seattle yeah, where uh, police can't pursue suspects anymore. <laughs> right? You got gunfire. You got, you got racing out here. <laughs> Jeez. America 2023. Isn't it fun? That's fun. He's limping. I don't know if he gets shot or what. Yeah. I don't know what's going on there. Don't you feel safe? Ah, damn, this is a uh, this is a, a, a like a parking lot where you know people are walking around shopping. Uh huh. Oh uh, yeah, we gotta love the. I saw Seattle was just ranked uh, the number eight city in the country for taking a walk. 
for walking around. I thought you were going to say number eight city for things that suck. <laughs> wow. No, it's higher than that for things that suck. Oh, for taking a walk? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's constantly raining. And now you got that going mm-hmm, on? Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. and isn't that where the uh, where the uh, Chaz zone was? <laughs> yes. Yeah, right around... So, yeah, it was downtown Seattle, right? Yeah, uh, yeah and of course, and we set up our own little mm-hmm. uh, autonomous zone in here, and that was uh, wonderful. A few years ago, we were walking around in downtown Seattle. It was beautiful. Uh-huh. Uh, all kinds of people smoking pot and uh, doing drugs. And, okay. Uh, yeah, it was it was wonderful. It was really Were they in really, really good beautiful. moods? Really good moods. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I didn't stop and chat with them didn't, that long. But, really? But... Uh, <laughs> They seemed very, very friendly. That's the town where they, like, throw fish at each other across the room, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, the fishmongers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's fun, huh? It's kind of fun. Okay. Uh, thanks to Greg Abbott's genius, though, busing uh, and his busing of illegals plan, more parts of the country are getting to experience illegal aliens uh, in their cities and having fun, <laughs> like in Chicago. Check out the police station. In it's Chicago, a police station it is, is now a homeless shelter for illegals. God, hey, this look! Is just you, you signed up to be a sanctuary city. <laughs> yep, you like that now? Congratulations! How's you it like taste? It? Yeah. But we have a, Let's go inside the police station, shall we, Pat? Yeah, let's, let's do. See what's going on inside. <laughs> so they're outside. They're outside. So that's they're just hanging around there, right? No, there's. A, oh, there we go. There's a soccer ball, and now we're inside. And uh, they're all, they've laid out their blankets and <laughs> sleeping bags. America, and, 2023. <laughs> and the, the police just allowed them to stay there, I guess. Bizarre. Hey, hey, when you sign up to be a sanctuary city, Pat, you're all in. Oh, Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, this is That's where I'd be right that's there. That's great. Though, back in the corner. There. Yeah. Jeez. There you go. Chicago, Illinois. So that's Los Angeles, New York, Chicago, and Seattle that we've seen. That uh, beautiful. It's lovely. Uh, beautiful things happening there. And in New York City, where illegals are being put up in in four star hotels, uh, here's some soldiers that are catering to every need. Yeah, watch of this. Those illegals. <laughs> this is this is our U.S. troops mm-hmm. bringing in the goods, man. How good. How nice. Look at that. See? And that's mm-hmm. a, what'd you say? A four-star hotel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, it's, uh, it's fun right now, isn't it? It's, uh, it's fun. I mean, Well, with this leadership, I mean, they don't care. They don't care that America is being destroyed right now <clears throat> by this problem. I mean, we are just overwhelmed. Yeah. We're completely overrun and overwhelmed with illegals spread throughout this country. Yeah, and we're paying the United Nations for like a, like an immigration study or something. Jeez. I don't know. It's it's. Uh, I was just reading about this yesterday. Um, this the, you know Agenda 2030. You're very familiar with it, but I mean this is part of it. The immigration, the food stuff that John Kerry was talking about. Mm-hmm. It's. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, we are. It's an invasion. And it's a destruction of our way of life. And in Europe, too. I mean, the Dutch farmers. The Dutch farmers are constantly pushing back and fighting on this globalist agenda. And, I mean, the West is being completely dismantled one area at a time. And we're hearing some common sense from places you wouldn't expect it, like RFK Jr. He talked about illegal immigration yesterday. Mm. Did not sound like a Democrat. I mean... Tell me a Democrat that sounds like this, other than <laughs> You've criticized RFK. President Biden for not closing the border. In a Kennedy administration, what would your short-term and long-term strategy look like uh, in a you, nutshell? Uh, I will make the border impervious. The, the fact that Whoa, that border impervious. has been open has created a <laughs> humanitarian crisis yep. on the border. Yep, yep. And for uh, for the sake of every, you know, for the sake of the the integrity of our country, you can't have a country where there's just an open border, where people are flowing in. I would I would widen um, the uh, increase the immigration quotas and bring people into this country, bring more people into this country legally. But uh, we we have to stop illegal immigration. We can't have hundreds of thousands or millions of people 
screaming across the border and uh, and and competing with American workers and uh, mm -hmm. and burdening our our um, you know the social service systems and cities all over the country. You, it's mm -hmm. just not a good mm -hmm. policy. If you don't win the Democratic primary, mm -hmm. will you go on to support the nominee of the party, or would you consider running as a third-party candidate, or even joining the other side? My plan is to win the Democratic nomination. And if you don't, I don't have a plan B. <laughs> I don't have a plan B. That is interesting. You know, his thoughts on immigration sounded just like Donald Trump in 2015 when he came down the escalator. That speech. Yeah. If we don't have a, a border, mm -hmm. we don't have a country. Period. I mean, he used Trump's words. Yeah. <laughs> it's well, true, too. Well, well, if we don't have a border, we don't have a country. What world is this that we're living in? I don't know. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> it is. It's pretty amazing. I'm telling you, man, Robert Kennedy's going to get a lot of votes in the Democrat primary. I'm not going to. It will not shock me if he wins this thing. <laughs> uh, at that last poll that we had last week, it was 36-35 Biden by one. Biden by one percentage point. Will that hold up? I don't know. I, I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. I was, I was disappointed we'll in that uh, uh, Harris-Harvard poll that we had yesterday. And, I mean, it's very involved with all sorts of stuff. I forget a couple of things that we referenced from it. But it actually asked Democrat voters who they preferred for president and Robert Kennedy wasn't even listed in the choices. It was the stupidest really? poll. I mean, it was very thorough. Had huh. a lot of incredible... Um, th that's the one where we said that the majority of Americans think that Joe Biden had a hand in the illegal dealings of his son, Hunter. Oh, yeah. And and one of the questions was, who's your choice, you know, Democrat voter, for uh, in the primary? And it was Joe Biden and a bunch of nobodies that, that aren't even declaring to run. And Robert Kennedy wasn't even listed. So that wow, was, that was frustrating because I would like yeah, to get an update on weird. that number and see how close it is now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But man, I tell you, it, the, congratulations to Mayor Adams and uh, City of Chicago, and now Denver is getting on board with the fun. Washington D.C. Uh, yeah, you guys are complaining about the costs to your cities. Um, welcome to Texas, right? And this has been going on forever. You know, they have state. a few thousand. Uh, I think. New York claims 70,000. Try like 7 million. Try 1 to 2 million a year coming across our border. And and try, you know, social services for all of those people year after year after year we've been dealing with this in Texas. Uh, so I don't want to hear your belly aching in New York. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> it was, they thought it was so cute when they could call themselves a sanctuary city. Yeah. And not have to deal with anything. How do you feel now? Well, let's, this is, uh, is that a good idea? Where the rubber meets the road. Let's you see know how you like it. Not one of those mayors wants to proclaim themselves a sanctuary city now. <laughs> you, <laughs> you don't hear them babbling about that. Well, we're a sanctuary city. You can come <laughs> here and we won't bother you at all. We're not going to send the police after you. Really? It might be all a right. time for another... Uh, Trip to Martha's Vineyard, by yeah. the way. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I don't know, man. This is, we are a nation that is falling apart mm. in all areas. But at least they're joining us. <laughs> they're at least, they're feeling our pain on the immigration mm -hmm. front. Yeah. And something, you know, maybe something will get done now. And we got more. Like if you guys are, are running low mm. on illegals. We got plenty down here. Oh, well, and Abbott just said he's going to keep doing this. He better. He's going to continue doing it. He better. <laughs> so, so you're going to have plenty <laughs> of opportunity to feel our pain because uh, uh, there's, you know, thousands coming across every day. Every day. 10, 12,000 a day. Crazy. Uh, yesterday in the Minnesota legislature, lawmakers had some fun with pronouns. Uh, we'll share that with you coming up here in a minute. Mm, um, that's mm. that's some fun. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we got to revisit that thing you talked about yesterday about what Target is selling in their stores. Oh, my gosh. That is, uh, that is amazing. Oh. The Satanist clothing. Uh, it's, it's Satanist. It is um, uh, it's clothing for... Trans, right? It's trans clothing. Yeah, it's that uh, Satanist guy making that stuff. Yeah. We've got one of the items we got to share that we didn't have a visual on yesterday, which is just 
It's shocking, but Interesting. here we are. Plus a Ford commercial from a while ago that is uh, interesting. We'll share that with you as well. Coming up. Pat Gray Unleashed. That, that, that. Got some uh, tweets here. B. DeBodine tweets. One thing the feds forgot to lay out there when the U-Haul truck crashed near the White House and the Nazi flag was nicely laid out <laughs> just to the side of the U-Haul truck. Uh, but they forgot the MAGA hat the driver was wearing. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> uh, Sarah the Roma tweets, I don't listen to the climate alarmists that also fly around the world in private planes and live in mansions whose carbon footprint is a billion times bigger than mine. No joke. Clever Twitter name. Uh, does the left have a stockpile of Nazi paraphernalia earmarked for psyops? And if so, does that mean the taxpayer dollars funded domestic terrorism? Ooh. Asking for a friend. Mm. Uh, Linda Rose W. The John Kerry statement about food is even more ridiculous since his wife's wealth and more likely, uh, more than likely his come from food products. <laughs> I guess we should <laughs> stop buying Heinz products. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Except yeah. I, can't. I can't. I can't do that. Yeah, he calls it irony. We call it uh, hypocrisy. Mm-hmm. The deplorable Mr. Jack Wagon. I hear Pat has a quinoa recipe that's just as good, if not better, than his famous kale recipe. Is that right? That's true, yeah. That is true. We'll so, have to show that sometime Yeah, soon. we do. Yeah, okay. We'll have to show that. Okay. I think you're going to really enjoy it. <laughs> uh, yesterday in the Minnesota legislature, lawmakers had some fun with pronouns, mm-hmm. which is... Great. Point of order, you're, Mr. Speaker. Okay, you're raising a point of order. State your point of order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'm happy to start over with that. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. What, what rule are you citing, Representative Damoth? And I would note to your parliamentary inquiry, Representative Kozlowski is crossed off on my list. I'm not sure why she wasn't okay, crossed so, off on your list. All right, there uh, we, but whatever. what's your what under what under what rule are you citing a point of order, Representative Damoth? Okay, so mm-hmm. watch this. Some guy's going to come up here and mm-hmm. whisper something. And he says, "I'm sorry." I'm sorry. Sorry. Oh, mm. gosh. Sorry. Oh. What is he sorry about? What, Thank what, you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Um, and what, I do appreciate, we, I know maybe my list has not been updated from what, your, what was the your prior note, about? and I appreciate the staff work that is done, so I in no way am um, disrespecting our staff and the work that they do so regularly. Uh, point of order under 10.05, Mr. Speaker. Representative Damoth, before I... Um, oh, no. Uh, recognize oh, you for that point go. of order. Uh-huh. I would like to correct myself that oh, it is the no. custom and usage mm-hmm. of this chamber no. to no. Um, use the proper gendering of our oh, members no. and that no. um, good, the proper good. pronoun to use was they. And so I would um, they, readjust my comments that they are have been excused on my list. Representative Damoth. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> okay. We're not a serious society. Uh, okay, come on now. It's over. Come on. Uh, the proper pronoun to use was they. No, not if you're speaking of a singular person. <laughs> they is not appropriate. It was a good run, y'all. <sighs> wow. Can you like I, I see stuff like that mm. and, and I just oftentimes I think if the founders dropped oh into my that gosh. spot yeah. and, and and witnessed this. They put some gallows outside the uh, legislature and they'd start hanging people. <laughs> It's just for destroying the country, because that's what they're doing. We are it's not exactly what they're doing. A serious country anymore. No, we're not. It's over. Yesterday, we mentioned the Satanists making clothing uh, for Target, and we didn't have the actual pin though. But look at the look at the pin that you can buy at Target. You can get this online, I believe, or at the store. And uh, there yeah, it is. Because you you had read this quote. This yeah, Satan. Satan respects pronouns. That's all you need to know about pronouns. Oh, man. And look closely. Look in the back there. There's a look at that. There's a starter um, Ouija board. Oh man. For all your yeah. uh, contacting evil dead spirit needs. Yeah, but they want you to know usually <laughs> these Satanists that they don't really believe in Satan. Oh. Yeah, which is exactly what Satan would have you <laughs> say about him. He doesn't really exist. Don't even worry about that. Sure, they're worshiping him and they're praising him, but he doesn't really exist. It's really all about respect for humans. Oh, is that is what it, it is? Is it? Get out of here. It's despicable and, of course, evil. Wait, respect for humans? Yeah, it's, yes. 
respect for humans that yes. they want ripped out of the womb? Yes. Right. Oh, okay. Right. Mm, okay. <sighs> well. But, I mean, that's because you don't know what's in there, you know. Oh, I see. Could be a, a Volkswagen. Okay. Could be a clump of broccoli. Got it. Okay. Could so be a little bit of asparagus. So that, okay. I, I, you don't know what it is. That's the loophole. Is it a Buick? I don't know. Let's wait and see. No way to know. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, man. Uh, but we are just bending over backwards uh, in this culture. Last year, I think this was last year, and I think they're bringing it back again for Pride Month. All right. <laughs> is a Ford Motor Company with the Ford Raptor. <laughs> It's a truck that uh, got dirty out in the wild. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then it, it gets sprayed. <laughs> okay. And let's see. You see, there's two trucks, actually. Okay. One of them is red. Oh, look, rated P for progress. Pat. Oh, good, good. <laughs> okay, so. Okay, so. Muddy. Yeah, tough. Ford trucks in a muddy area with not a really good road. Can, so. Can I just ask a quick question? Um, I'm a truck owner. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, I've never been in a position like this where I've just been like, man, I got some free time to go and dirty up my truck. Is really? this like a practical use for yeah, a truck? I'm sure it is. I'm sure this is what most people do with Racing their trucks. in the mud? Yeah, okay. they're about to go through some water, and it's going to clean them up. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then clean up. you're going to see a really nice red truck. Oh, there's the, there's the, the rogue the water hose out there in the middle of the woods. Yeah that you see so often out in the woods. So okay. one of them got sprayed off. Now this one gets sprayed off, and it's it's a rainbow truck. All right. It's a gay truck. It's gay. Isn't that great? It's That's a gay. gay truck. That's beautiful. Is that beautiful or what? <laughs> Ford is making a gay truck now because they're oh. redefining tough. Now, Nothing says tough like a gay truck. So it was born gay. Right, that Yes. Truck. Okay. Yes. So clarify. That came out of the factory like that. Anybody remember the argument, hey, so what if gays can marry? How does that affect you? <laughs> well, here is how it affected the rest of us. It opened the floodgates and it burst the dam. Because for the radicals in that community, it was never about just gay marriage. <clears throat> Tolerance <clears throat> used to be their big byword. Anybody remember that? Well, to tolerance isn't even mentioned anymore. Why? Because we're light years beyond tolerance. Now it's acceptance. Now it's embrace. Now we promote. And the only, only thing left is to actually become part of the LGBTQQIA2 plus community. <clears throat> I mean, truck commercials, beer, athletic shoe companies, they're all... Uh, turning to LGBTQQIA2 plus spokespeople or themes to sell their products. <clears throat> Nearly every commercial now features them. And every show on TV and movies, all of them feature gay relationships. All of them. Sometimes the majority of relationships on these shows are gay or trans. The LGBTQ lifestyle is injected into our kids' programming. They forced drag queens on our kids in libraries and schools. They encourage kids' attendance at sexualized drag shows. And if you have any objection to any of the above, you're a bigot. You're a homophobe. You're a transphobe. You want to burn books. You're a fascist. I mean, next month... LGBTQQIA2 plus celebrates their pride over the way they have sex. Isn't that what Pride <laughs> Month is all about? <laughs> Gay pride is <laughs> about the their their pride over the way they have <laughs> sex. I, that makes me think they they should honestly change the the term Pride Month to Sex Month. Right, they should because that's they what should. they're celebrating. Right. <laughs> And the thing is now, not only are they celebrating it, but they expect all of us to celebrate it with them. Sports teams are forced to wear rainbow jerseys and participate in pride events. It's only been the last little while where a few, uh, a few of the players have said, look, I'm not going to participate in that. I'm not going to do it. But it doesn't matter, really, to, uh, to the powers that be whether you want to take part or not. 
sorry, you don't have a choice. You will capitulate or we're coming for you. So is it just an amazing coincidence that all of this has taken place since gay marriage was legalized? Or or was this part of the plan for this avalanche to overtake our society now? Jeez, I don't know. I don't know. Let me tell you about Eden Pure Thunderstorms. We got the three-pack, and you can purify the air in your home in three different rooms now for about, well, under $200. I mean, it's a great offer. I mean, you're talking with other with other brands about six hundred dollars or more for something similar. The Eden Pure Thunderstorm air purifiers use Oxy technology, and that naturally sends out O3 molecules into the air, and that seeks out and uh, destroys odor and air pollutants in your home and destroys them. So it uh, it doesn't just mask things or perfume up your air. It it freshens it, and it destroys the odors. It's called the thunderstorm because it purifies the air in your home uh, like a thunderstorm you know, does outside. And right now, you can save $200 on an Eden Pure Thunderstorm 3-pack for whole home protection. You get three units for under $200. So easy to install. I mean, if I can do this, seriously, anybody, a four-year-old can do this. Wow. Take it out of the box, plug it in, and that's it. Well, turn it on. And then that's it. You keep adding steps. <laughs> so you wait. Hold on. Sorry, it is complicated. You take it out you of take the box. It out of the box. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, you don't want to plug the box in because that would be hard. I'm glad you clarified. So yeah, take it out of the box. Okay. Step one. Take it out of the box. Okay. Plug it into the wall. To plug it into the wall. Yeah. And then there's a little knob on it, and you turn that on. Yeah. So there's three steps. Three steps. Yeah. Can you remember all those, y'all? <laughs> I hope you can. If not, email me. And I'll help you. I'll walk you through it. I really will. It's it's not hard. Walk us through. <laughs> Go to EdenPureDeals.com and put in the discount code PAT to save $200. EdenPureDeals. E-D-E-N-P-U-R-E Deals.com. EdenPureDeals.com. Discount code PAT. Shipping is free. Gray unleashed. God, <laughs> never ends, bro. Uh, it speaking never ends. of the whole LGBTQIA2 plus and the drag situation, you know the Dodgers invited this uh, drag these drag nuns. They're an anti-Catholic drag group. They mock Catholics, and they invited them to a Pride night because again, <laughs> everybody's got to celebrate. Pride night, whether you're part of the community or not, we all have to join in now and uh, celebrate June together. No, the okay. whole month is for the way some people prefer to do sex. So isn't that fun? <laughs> That's fun, right? <laughs> so What a world, man. I know. It's unbelievable to me. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, somebody's got to eventually put their foot down and say, look, you guys want to do that? That's fine. I don't care. I'm not going to join you in that. All right. Well, I mean, I'm not. We, we saw the power uh, in the NHL. Yes. You recall we had one guy. For one the Flyers guy took a stand, and and it led to a whole bunch of players, and then teams, and eventually the league was like, yeah, you know, we're good. Yeah. So you can make you, a difference. You can't force people to participate in in promoting the LGBTQ community. You can't. I mean, you could try. I guess you could fire him from the uh, hockey team. But they didn't. Um, but they invited these uh, these drag queens who dress as nuns and mock Catholicism. You know, there's only, what, 1.2 billion Catholics worldwide? Um, I wonder how many drag queens there are. <laughs> Are there are there more than that? I don't know. You it, would think so. It feels like it. it like, feels like in it. the last couple of months, it feels like there's been an explosion in that number. It, it could Jeez, be up to one point two billion at this point. It it's incredible. So they invited these drag queens to perform on a Pride night, and they got some pushback from their fans, and so they disinvited the drag queens, and then um, apologized to the drag nuns. And reinvited them. Oh God! These are the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. 
My God, this is different than the witches who like abortion. Yes, that we talked about. <laughs> right, different. yeah, a little okay. bit different a little group. Okay. Uh, similar though, in some ways, I'm sure, but uh, slightly different. So they come in and they perform, and um, uh, some of these people have said this is an anti-Catholic hate group, mm-hmm. and that's that's what they informed the Los Angeles Dodgers of, and they uninvited them. And then I guess there was too much kickback from the trans community. Uh, well, so so um, this group's motto is "Go forth and send some more." An inversion of Christ's command oh to go gosh. and sin no more. Oh my uh, since its inception on Easter Sunday, 1979, the mm. SPI has long ridiculed Catholic teaching and doctrine, mocking the church's orthodox views on marriage, sexuality, homosexuality, transgenderism, and abortion. Um, mm. I mean, listen to this. Listen to this. The president of the advocacy group Catholic Vote indicated that in one famous stunt, this group of uh, trans. Uh, drag queen nuns, whatever, tricked an archbishop into giving them the Eucharist, the most important sacrament oh of the Catholic faith, oh so my. they could defile it. Oh, jeez. But congratulations to the Los Angeles <sighs> Dodgers baseball team who, choosing this anti-Christian group. And 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 this is this is what the Dodgers said. They're 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 praising them for quote their countless hours of community service, ministry, and outreach. To those on the edges, in addition to promoting human rights and respect for diversity and spiritual enlightenment. Uh, <clears throat> they're calling their, what they do, a ministry? Okay. All right. Okay. They're reaching those on the edges, Pat. Wow, that is outrageous. Whew. And it just shows they couldn't care less. No. About Christians, about Catholics. About their fan base, that that is a slap in the face sure to Dodger fans who don't want to participate in that garbage. Oh. I guess it's okay to mock uh, if you know you're mocking the right thing. If you're mocking religion, then that's great. That's fine. That's don't right. worry about that. I guess the moral of the story that's is that's not hate. You know, if you take your kids to a sporting event or any kind of public gathering, quite frankly. In the month of June, you run the risk of seeing something that you don't want them to see. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Mm. Yep. And it's, and, of course, not just limited to June. And whatever and whatever you're going to during the course of the month, um, just know that whoever is putting on that show, they don't care. They don't care about your sensibilities at all or the sensibilities that you have for your kids. It just doesn't matter. The only sensibilities that matter are the trans and the drag people. That's it. And that's why the Dodgers apologized and re-invited them. Pat Gray, Unleashed. Hey, coming up on Thursday, we've got another Off the Record for you. Uh, this will be at 11 o'clock, 11 in the morning, Central Time. So that's uh, 12 Eastern, 11 Central. I'm going to be hosting the Off the Record private Q&A exclusively for Blaze TV subscribers. It's your chance to just chat with me about anything and everything that's on your mind. Uh, we don't have any big tech sensors looking over our shoulders, so no topics uh, off limits. Um, so if you're not a Blaze TV subscriber, go to the Blaze T- go to blazetv.com slash off the record and sign up today so you can join the conversation. Use a promo code off the record. The other Blaze TV hosts and I are uh, going to be doing these live chats on a regular basis. I think it's about once a month. Yeah, and that's the important thing is that you want to tune into these live so that you can participate with your questions. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can go back mm-hmm. and watch mm-hmm. it later if you like, but you're going to lose right. the opportunity to exactly. question in. So answer anything and everything um, Thursday, 11 a.m. So go to blazetv.com slash off the record. Subscribe today so you can be there and, and join us. 12 Eastern, 9 Pacific. Thank you, Keith. Mm-hmm. Which makes it 11 Central and uh, 10 Mountain. Mm-hmm. What time is it in Alaska? I don't know. Eight. eight? Yeah. Is it eight? What about Hawaii? Uh, six? I think seven. Seven? I think seven. Let's, let's <laughs> is there only an hour difference between Alaska and Hawaii? Do they do the time change there? <clears throat> Current time is two, so they're five hours. Yeah, so mm. seven, mm-hmm. six, five, four, 
Three, two. No, so there are two more. My gosh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So weird. Wow. What time is it in Guam? Actually, this would be on <laughs> Friday in Guam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So deal with that. Yeah, because I remember one time I was thinking, when do people in Guam watch NFL football? And I did the time thing, and it was Monday mm -hmm. morning. Oh, really? And I thought, eh, that's kind of weird. That is kind of weird. I'm glad I don't live in Guam. Yeah, so then frankly. it becomes like Tuesday evening-ish football instead of Monday night football. <laughs> right, which is not fun. No. That's not good. That's not right. It's just wrong, frankly. Uh, Tim Scott has announced he's running for president. <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> okay. <cool. laughs> Yay! All right. That and even better. Good. Chris Christie has just submitted paperwork. Chris Christie Are is going to run real? for president. Yeah. Can you even imagine what would possess Chris Christie to think he has any shot at becoming president of the United States? Go home, Chris. Yeah. Come on. Get get on the plane and get out of here. Come on. <laughs> when Trump told him that. Go yeah. home, Chris. Okay, this is... Oh. There's there's really two people who have a shot at the Republican nomination, I think. Donald Trump and Ron DeSantis. Other than that, maybe Vivek. I don't know, Vivek. Vivek uh -huh. Ramaswamy. He's gotten quiet lately. He has. I wonder what's going on there. I don't know, but I, I really like him. Uh -huh. I really like him. I don't know that he has much of a shot, but... He's really good. So do you have a list in front of you, put you on the spot here, of people that are confirmed? Oh. Hello? All right. Do you All have right. a list of people that are confirmed on the Republican side? Um, that are confirmed? Yeah, that are running. Uh, Nikki Haley? Okay. Tim Scott? Yes. Um, Chris Christie? Is that uh, right? Yeah, I don't... He's just filed papers. <laughs> I don't think he's announced. Oh, okay. Uh, Donald Trump? Donald Trump. Ron DeSantis? DeSantis oh, announces yeah. tomorrow. Is that right? Tomorrow? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, Vivek. Mm, Vivek. That's six. Is that it? I, I, oh, Mike already... Pence. I think Mike Pence is, uh -huh. if he hasn't announced, he's going to. Um, and, and there's another guy who doesn't have a shot. You don't have a shot, Mike. What, what are you doing? So. Don't waste our time and yours. It was Larry Hogan already got in and out. <laughs> like he did the hokey pokey. Yeah. You know, <laughs> he's, he's already out again. Um, is that it? That was smart to get out. <laughs> yeah. Getting like, in was not smart, but getting out was smart because no, yeah. you don't. Nobody even knows who you are, Lair. Okay, Lair. Nobody even knows who you are. So, so that's an interesting uh, field there. Yeah, it is. And, and it's a good field. It's way better than than the Democrat. Of course, I mean Robert F. Kennedy, Jr. is uh, a decent candidate, I think, to go up against Biden. Uh, Marianne Williamson, not so oh, much. Cool. Oh, did Not I say so this much. on the show? I can't remember if it was on the show or in a conversation. Um, my daughter, uh, it, she did this like political quiz mm -hmm. in one of her like government studies classes in college. Yeah, and um, and it just it, it tried to figure out who you were most aligned with, and she was most aligned with the Constitutional Party, okay. Constitution Party, whatever it is. Yeah, and least aligned with Marianne Williamson. <laughs> I was like. That's good. My girl, she hasn't been yeah, taken good. from me yet. That's great. Anyway, so that was fun. But honestly, Robert Kennedy Jr., there is a lane, and it's it's becoming more and more obvious that this guy's got a shot, a yeah. real shot. Yeah. I mean, the Democrats would be stupid to not nominate him. Yeah, and I, I, I don't want to mislead uh, conservatives into thinking that this guy... Is my guy? He's certainly not my guy. Mm -hmm. He's you know he's pro-abortion. He's a climate change guy. I mean he's wrong on many many things, but on the things he's right about, yeah. he's really really good. And see, and I've had this kind of internal discussion as well. I, I am right there with you as far as let's not lose sight mm -hmm. of the fact that he's a leftist. Yes, he is. Okay, but let's also not lose sight of the times that we're in. And yeah. the times that we're in and the stances and that he's he is. he's a better leftist than Joe Biden. Absolutely. By far. In the in, in the positions that he is taking on the major issues of today mm -hmm. are very intriguing. Yeah, he's yeah, they are. He's definitely As getting, a Democrat. Yeah, I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going to be completely honest with, with you and the audience. I mean, I'm looking at him. I haven't written him off. I'm absolutely paying attention to the things that he says. And uh, there's a lot there to like. Now, at the end of the day, like you said, there's a lot there that he and I are going to disagree mm -hmm. quite so on. But mm -hmm. when it comes to 
bodily autonomy and the vaccines and his stance on lockdowns and him admitting that climate change is used to is going to be used by the elites at Davos to further um, lockdowns. I, I, I was stunned at what, what he said today on immigration. And be yeah, like, yeah, we got to close the borders. A Democrat yeah, daring was... to suggest we lock the borders down? Didn't he say he used the word impervious? We got to make yes. our borders yes. impervious? And the fact that this man understands Bitcoin to the point where he has issued a six-point plan to make sure that you keep your Bitcoin and the government stays out. My gosh, there he is going to speak to a lot of independents in 2024. And this is going to be a wild ride for the next 18 months. And if he were to not win the Democrat nomination... It would be great if he ran as an independent. It would be. <laughs> that'll hurt the Democrats more. He would hurt Joe Biden. Yes. <laughs> yes. I would love to see it. Now, he said he's got no plan B if he doesn't win the Democrat nomination, but I, I don't know. Maybe he would run as, a, uh, as an independent. If you can get him to agree that Joe Biden sucks <laughs> and should not be president. <laughs> Maybe he'd run as a spoiler. I don't know. Man, I, I just... I don't know. The, the time that we live in right now where the unthinkable <laughs> happens, mm-hmm. I, 2024 is going to be... I, it could be just ridiculous. Like, you remember, like before the Civil War, we had four candidates yeah. you know, at the end. Yeah. I, I could see something like that happening again. Yeah, mm. definitely. Uh, a senior Russian lawmaker who was reportedly critical of the invasion of Ukraine, died suddenly over the weekend. Huh. Weird. Was was he vaxxed? Is that the point you're making? No. (laughs) No, that's not the point I'm making. (laughs) The point I'm making is he got on a plane after criticizing uh, the war effort and saying that it was a fascist invasion of Ukraine. And then he started feeling really poorly on this flight. He became ill and... um, that it was a plane carrying Russian delegates home after a business trip to Cuba. Flight made an emergency landing in southern Russia, but doctors couldn't save him. Hmm. Huh. Huh. Strange. He you just seem, got super sick, super you, fast. Forty six years old. You seem stumped. <clears throat> yeah, I don't. I can't figure it out. I don't know what happened to Pyotr Kuchin, Kucherenko. Sure. <clears throat> Pyotr Kucherenko. Hmm. Maybe he got some 46 years old. Bad vodka. That's it's possible. Hmm. A very very bad. 46. I mean, batch of something. That's ancient, right? <laughs> if you're if you're 46, you're on borrowed time. That's right. That's so, right. So you could have seen this coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So interesting how that happens in, it, it in it Russia is. over uh, and over and over again. Over and <clears throat> over. Uh, it's this is amazing. Um, Kucherenko allegedly told one of his friends that it was impossible for him to leave because authorities had taken away his passport. There's no world that would be happy to see a Russia, a deputy Russian minister after a fascist invasion. That's sadly one of the things he said that uh, apparently got back to uh, the powers that be, namely Vladimir Putin. Mm. And all of a sudden, he's telling his friends, I feel terrible on this flight. And uh, pretty soon... He was gone. Uh, that's really sad. I, yeah. I mean, over and over and over and over, this has happened with Russian oligarchs, uh, Russian lawmakers, people who have fallen out of windows, people getting sick. Uh, in February, a military bureaucrat who criticized the Kremlin for losses in Ukraine suddenly fell 16 floors to her death in St. Petersburg. Um, that was about the fourth or fifth person who had fallen out of a window and died. <laughs> we got to ban you, windows in Russia. Yeah, you got to stay away from the windows. We tried to issue that directive a while ago for yeah. Russians, but they didn't listen to us. Didn't listen to Pat Gray. They keep, they keep falling out these windows. Hmm. Similar accidents have befallen prominent individuals in Russia's energy sector. Uh, Ravil Maganov, the chairman of the board of Russia's second biggest oil company, Luke Oil, died after falling from a window, a hospital window, in Moscow in September. Another Luke Oil executive died in in strange circumstances just a few months earlier, while other energy figures have recently been involved in suspicious hangings and murder-suicides. Huh. I'm... 
I'm sure it's just the stress of the job. That's probably what it is. You know? Yeah, I must suck being a... Yeah. Was it an oligarch, you said? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you got billions of dollars. You don't know where to put it. How many banks do I have to use in order for it to be FDIC insured? You know, it's it's stressful. And then pretty soon you're falling out a hospital window. Wow, that escalated fast. <laughs> it did, didn't it? Oh, boy. Yeah, man. It ain't easy being an oligarch. <clears throat> no, it's not. Mm. Or a Russian lawmaker. A Russian lawmaker. Uh, yeah, that... What not... I mean, as long as you toe the line, uh, it's probably it's probably a little bit easier. But uh, if you don't, then so it... what's what? Okay, you talk about <clears throat> the guy who got sick there and died in Russia. Mm-hmm. Um, what what is the latest on Vladimir Putin's health? Have we heard in a while? I haven't heard a peep about that uh, yeah. situation. Supposedly he has cancer, but then haven't heard much about that lately. I'm just looking here. Let's see. <clears throat> uh, so, New York Times, I just Googled this, and it says, uh, New York Times story from April 26th, so just a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Documents reflect persistent, if unfounded, speculation on Putin's health. Let's see. Leaked materials include unsubstantiated intelligence about Ukrainian politicians claim Russian leaders undergoing chemotherapy. So, in other words, we have no idea. So, we're going to print a story anyway. Okay. So, we don't know. We, we don't, don't know. know. Uh, mm-hmm. April 12th. Yeah, all these are just questions. Yeah, that, and here's something from April 11th that says Putin suffers from blurred vision and numb tongue. <laughs> How do we know that? Doctors panic over his health. Has he has he talked about his numb tongue? I don't know. Let's see here. <laughs> the new development comes at a time when there are various rumors surrounding the Russian president's deteriorating health conditions. So a numb tongue. Suck my tongue. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Would he even notice? <laughs> Wouldn't even notice. No, it's he, numb. He wouldn't feel so, it. So, no. Oh, uh-huh. my goodness. I don't know, man. So, very strange. All right. Let me uh, have you picture for a moment uh, what it would be like if all of a sudden the global medication supply chain of antibiotics just <clears throat> disappeared right before our eyes. You know, most of our medicine that we have in this country is manufactured in places like India and China. And you can bet that if things go wrong, they're not going to worry about our needs. So what do you do when all of a sudden you or somebody you love needs antibiotics and there simply aren't any to be had? Well, the answer is you should have a supply on hand in case of disaster. The Jace case from Jace Medical is a great way to keep yourself prepared for the worst. It's a pack of five different courses of antibiotics that you can use to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses. Uh, It's a great way to be ready for shortages it's perfect for traveling, so don't be caught unprepared. Go to Jace Medical, J-A-S-E, Jace Medical. Enter the promo code PAT at checkout. That's promo code PAT at J-A-S-E, JaceMedical.com. Pat Gray, Unleashed. I got some tweets here. Uh, the Buchero of Brown Company. Okay. Tweets, uh, they are legion. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, Paco D, when I think respect humans, I think Satan. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, that's pretty much everybody. Uh, DMX DM tweets, that Ford commercial is rated P for pandering. Oh, mm-hmm. very good. Mm-hmm. And Rowdy Introvert. Uh, John Kerry really puts the special in special presidential envoy for climate, doesn't he? That's right. That's right. I mean, that's one thing that I failed to mention when we're talking about the Dutch farmers and stuff. (laughs) You realize the government is seizing 3,000 farms, Mm -hmm. limiting the number of cows you can have uh, to two. I I mean, they Mm -hmm. are implementing this new world order from the WEF directives. Man. It is. They are. You can have two cows uh to per field i mean i don't want to be ridiculous per field oh okay so if yeah. i have right 1400 fields mm-hmm. i can have 2800 head of cattle so you're fine <laughs> I mean, this is so that's not bad right you just need 1400 fields and you can see why they're constantly blocking gosh, traffic and pushing back over that's there. incredible all in the name of saving the planet yep now, from a microaggressor, only Keith would wonder what time football is on in Guam. Well, that's a reasonable question. No, it's really not. 
What do you mean? No, I want to know what time people watch football not. over there. Because I'm guessing not that many people in Guam are even watching football. Yeah, they're more worried about their yeah. island turning over. Yes, they're scared that if, when the Marines get there, they're going to tip over and uh, capsize. <laughs> Millie Mac tweets, uh, we can't afford to feed Chris Christie. <laughs> 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 Not enough room in the budget. The federal budget, baby. Jeffy's mother in the moon. What? RFK Jr. is your father's Democrat party. Mm. Uh, yeah, uh, that is really true. That is really, he's more of your of your father's Democrat. Mm-hmm. Today's Democrat is really like your father's communist. That's pretty much what today's Democrat so is. So true. <laughs> your father's communist and today's communist (laughs) (laughs) that's neat how it it applies to both eras yeah Yeah. (laughs) because the communists really haven't changed that much you know the democrats have but not the communists Mm -hmm. uh so uh uh here's something that we've been concerned about for some time Um, this may strike your listeners as way out but we actually believe that there is a colony on mars Mm -hmm. that is populated by children who were kidnapped and sent into space on a 20-year ride uh, <laughs> so that once they get to Mars, they have no alternative but to be slaves on the Mars colony. There's a lot there, you know. Uh, one, why does it take 20 years to get to Mars? What are you tra- Are you going there by camel? <laughs> are, a space camel is taking you to Mars? How, how does that work? First of all, it doesn't take 20 years to get to Mars. Secondly... Once they get there, why is their only alternative to become sex slaves? Well, and there's no other vocation on Mars. Well, hold on, hold on, <laughs> hold on. There's so much here. There is. Hold there's on. a lot. If it's taking them 20 years, uh huh. I mean, not to be gross here, but I mean, the people that are wanting them by the time they get there, be like, oh, they're too they're old. Too now. old. Yeah. Too old. That's a good point. That's another point. And wait a minute. <laughs> Have we been over this before? This is deja vu. Did you... Is the word sex in there? Maybe they're breaking rocks. Oh. Do we know? Oh, I don't know. You You're, know what I'm saying? You know, like, I think we have talked about that before. Yeah. Um, this may strike your listeners as way out, but we no. actually... What? what? No. I mean, that was crazy talk right from the start. <laughs> why, why are you going there, bro? Give us some credit. We believe that there is a colony on Mars <laughs> okay. that is populated by, by children who were kidnapped children. and sent into space on a 20-year ride. Uh, so that once they get to Mars, they have no alternative but to be slaves on the Mars colony. No, yeah. slaves. Could be yeah. just, just slaves. Could be so they're not sex slaves. Out the trash. Necessarily. Right. <laughs> right. They're just not being paid for their labor on Mars. <laughs> 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 but, I mean, I'm kind of offended that he would say this may seem way out there. Yeah, I, I am too. To who? Sure, sir, I don't understand. You know, NASA responded to that. Oh, did they? Back in the day. Uh-huh. Yeah. What did they uh, say? There's, there's no colony on Mars. That's <laughs> a boring don't have a, response. We don't have a slave colony on Mars. That's a boring response. So, it is. It really is. And of course, and of course, a lie, a flat out lie. What would a federal government say? To yeah, of course, they're going to say, yes. no, we don't have a slave colony on mm-hmm. Mars. Um, maybe we should get, we should get uh, Bart Sabrell. To uh, oh, maybe we can on. get him back on to talk you, about it. You love him, right? Oh, he's great. Okay, so yeah, uh, the m- fake moon guy. Yeah, it'd be great. Yeah, so if you missed that, that was back. Uh, that was the April twenty eighth Pat Gray Unleashed program. If you want to go back, because every Friday, the last Friday uh-huh. of every month now, we're gonna have like a, a chat with with someone about an idea that maybe seems way out there. Right. Which. Day after tomorrow, that's what we got coming up. Uh, We're going to talk about Oklahoma City and some of the theories that surround what happened there uh, at the Murrah building back in 1994. It's been almost 30 years. Wow. 30. It's 29 years now ago. 20, yeah. So um, we've got... It's 94, uh, wasn't it? 95. Was it 95? Yeah. Uh, April 19th, 1995. Mm. All right. And um, we've got uh, former state rep Charles Key, who immediately afterward, like within months, had this long video with all of these unanswered questions. Mm. Uh, So we've got him lined up uh, for the top of the show. Then we've got uh, old buddy of yours, attorney Chris Tritico, who was the... He was the attorney for uh, Timothy McVeigh. Right, right. So we're going to talk to him. Mm-hmm. And then we got podcaster Jose Gallison, who is going to tell us about um, 
something that I hadn't only recently, thanks to the pad heads, been made aware of, which was he has a lot of information about the first police officer to arrive on the scene. And there's a lot of issues. It's a story I didn't know about until recently. Yeah. It's really weird. About his mysterious death and what he may have known. Mm. There is so much, so much to Oklahoma City yeah. that we don't know. What happened to the John Doe number two that we heard about so much? Yeah. Middle Eastern descent, mm. John Doe number two, seen by 20 people or yes. more. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then all of a sudden, nah, there, there's no John Doe number two. <laughs> It was just Tim McVeigh and uh, and Terry Nichols. Terry Nichols wasn't even around at that time, so it wasn't him. Well, Who was the Middle Eastern descent guy? Who's who's that? And why did you just all of a sudden drop that? Weird. Some mm-hmm. weird stuff there. Very much so. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if they wanted to deal with it. I don't know what the deal was there, but we'll get into all of that. Yeah. yeah. So, on Friday. If you have questions, you know, be sure to uh, send them to us through Twitter uh, at Keith Malinak at Pat Unleashed, or I guess maybe call and join the discussion Friday morning, huh? Mm-hmm. Uh, between uh, seven and nine Eastern, uh, the number is eight 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 nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Let's get to the bottom of this because there is so much this government holds back from the people that what? they don't want us to know. And Not we're the gonna, U.S. government. We're, yeah, the U.S. That's that's huh. who, that's who I'm referring to. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Weird. The same people that are denying that we have uh, little child slaves on Mars. <laughs> <laughs> Which, of course, is silly. We know that to be silly. Of course there's a child slave colony like, on Mars. What are they Mars. doing? Like, because we... If I think they're breaking wor- rocks. Right, if they've things. been working hard up there, why yeah. haven't we moved there yet? <laughs> Let's go build something already! <laughs> This is Pat Gray Unleashed. Uh, so Supreme Court Justice Neil Gorsuch uh, gave a scathing overview of the COVID era. Fear and the desire for safety are powerful forces, he said. Uh, he said one lesson might be this. Fear and the desire for safety are powerful forces. They can lead to a clamor for action, almost any action, as long as someone does something to address a perceived threat. (laughs) Wow, how true that is. A leader or an expert who claims he can fix anything if only we do exactly as he says can prove an irresistible force. We do not need to confront a bayonet. We need only a nudge. Before we're, we willingly abandon the nice uh, nicety of requiring laws to be adopted by our legislative re- representatives and accept rule by decree. Wow, really uh, true. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gorsuch was writing as the justices dismissed a pending appeal over the ending of Title 42, uh, which was used between March 2020 and May of this year to expel migrants. Migrants. Illegal aliens. <laughs> Migrants uh, <laughs> denotes that they came here legally. They didn't, so they're illegal aliens. Um, also, speaking of the COVID pandemic and the panic and you know the mandates that they imposed on us, um, this is interesting because Grabian put together a montage of uh, what many people were saying about forcing kids to wear masks in school. And... It's really important that we not forget uh, the kinds of things that they were saying because this will happen again. They've already been setting it up that another pandemic is coming and it's inevitable. And, uh, well, we already showed you what has to be done the first time. And if you want to save more lives, we're going to have to do it even more ridiculously the next time. Anyway, here's what they had to say. A really striking comment that you made in this interview said from a broad public health standpoint, and I'm quoting you now, at the population level, masks work at the margins, (laughs) maybe 10%. In the schools, everybody should wear a mask. Asking kids to wear a mask is uncomfortable, but you know, kids are pretty resilient. Kids are resilient. And if anything, this Mm. is going to build resilience in our children. (laughs) Wounds have long-term psychological effects on on young kids, do you think? Hmm. No. I don't think so. 
I think, in fact, it's good. Masking good. Yeah. Uh, is very important, particularly in the schools. Masks are safe. Masks do work. I have a nine-year-old. He tolerates masks for everything. I don't hear him whine, just like I don't hear him whine about his seatbelt or his bike helmet. Oh. Children have no problem with what is going on. They want to deal sensibly mm-hmm. by way of the science with COVID. They've said yeah. we have no difficulty. Pause it for a sec. That's one thing <laughs> kids used to say to me all the time during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. I mean, four or five-year-olds would come up to me and they'd say, you know, we want to deal with the science of this pandemic. Really? So we're only too happy to continue to wear these masks. Wow. I, if I had one kid say that, uh huh. you know? You had how many? <laughs> if you had one kid. If I had one, it would have been more than actually said that to me. So... Uh, let's hear the rest Mommy, of this. Mommy, let's trust the science. <laughs> That's Just stupid. All right, Children there's more. have no problem with what is going no on. Problem. They want no to problem. deal they sensibly want to do it. They by way of the science oh with gosh, COVID. This is They've said we have no difficulty <laughs> with students wearing masks. Sure. But I look at the history uh-huh. of the world, and when I think of like my parents and grandparents growing mm-hmm. up in depressions, fighting wars, mm-hmm. kids always had a part to play, too. And oh, yeah. when I look at the oh, fact God. that they're just wearing a mask, but... They have a roof over their head. They have food. A mask is basically non-intrusive completely. I've yet to see a child whose mask was bothering him or her. Are in you fact, kidding in the emergency me? Department, the kids are the best ones <laughs> at wearing masks, and they often help their parents <laughs> put masks on correctly. There's Pause nothing. it for a second. Uh, that is outrageous. <gasps> I have yet to see a kid who will willingly wear the mask when they're really small like that. Are you kidding me? My head's going to literally explode. <laughs> listening to this garbage you can't forget these people Mm. you can't forget what they put you and your family and your kids through yep and this is just the masks we're not even talking about the vaccines yet yeah but this goes on and on (sighs) oh and they often help their parents put masks on correctly there's nothing adverse or bad about masks <laughs> we've used masks for decades we mask kids in our cancer wards routinely we've used we have them for now decades? a plethora of ongoing <laughs> research and studies wow. um, and documents huh. that are showing huh. us that masks do not put children at risk no. this concept that children somehow are harmed or abused by wearing masks uh-huh. is what? not founded in any science it's simple uh, it does no harm uh, my kids wear them to school the idea that children won't wear masks is actually an abdication of leadership to say that we can't ask them and won't set an example for them. Those 50 million children need Mm. to protect themselves by wearing masks. If I'm going to get on an airplane, I don't have to wear a mask. Uh, but I will have my kids wear one. I don't think this is politically uh, dividing at all. I wear masks, my kids wear masks. I don't understand why parents are not listening to the science, not teaching their children to wear a mask. My responsibility, if I am lucky enough to be the next governor of Georgia, is to look at the science, to follow the the protocols, and to set the right example. You need a mask. Thank goodness she was not lucky enough to to be the next governor of Georgia. In classrooms of children, they are happy to wear masks. Oh, they're happy. They love it. By the they fact do. That children have so much neuroplasticity so that if this is a bump in their social development, but uh-huh. that they can repair very easily. Uh, you don't sure. go to naked. Yeah. Uh, and right now, you shouldn't be going to school without a mask. You're not likely to be able to be exposed to something and spread it to mommy or daddy. And it's not likely mommy and daddy are able to spread it to you either. So I wouldn't worry about it, baby. I promise you. That's why we need to make sure children are wearing masks in school. Wow. Gee, that is incredible. Not only do they not uh, mind it, they love it. They love to wear masks all day long at school. Super comfortable. Helps them breathe. You know, it, all that stuff gets kind of glommed into the mask Builds character over the course when of the day, and then in. they're breathing more of that. Sure, yeah. What that does is um, it helps your immune system because uh-huh. your immune system immediately starts attacking all that stuff. Yeah. So you're continually... All right. You, you have an active immune system. All it's right. really good for them. It's, it really is. And they love it. They absolutely love it. <laughs> you know, not being able to breathe all freaking day. Yeah, it's great they for them. It. They love it, huh? Yeah, they love it. So... Every one of those people probably have coddled their children 
um, looked out for their self-esteem, <laughs> made sure that they got their participation trophy, mm-hmm. and that mm-hmm. you know there was no, mm-hmm. uh, never any kind of uh, uh, pushback whatsoever. And then they get on there and they try to convince us that their children that they're talking about are resilient enough mm-hmm. to push through. Right. They're and strong. just wear a mask. They're tough. They're tough. They All can this. day, eight hours at school, wear a mask. Are and, you kidding me? And then they lean on something really? like science, right? They yeah. say, well, you got to trust the science. Again, these are the same people who say feelings matter. Yeah. Fe- not truth, not science, feelings. At, at these people. Boy, I was enraged over three years, but that was spread out over three years. And then to have it all condensed in uh, three minutes? I know. I'm angry. <laughs> I know. It's cr- that was nuts. That was just nuts. How long's the delay today, Lance? Oh, my <laughs> gosh. I can't That's with these people. Probably somewhat close to the delay that exists every day. Not enough. Yeah. It's not long enough. I've got things <laughs> I need to say to these people. <laughs> oh, uh, let me tell you about uh, taking care of your liver. It's more important now than it ever has been because the latest data from the American Heart Association indicates that adults with fatty liver were three and a half more times uh, likely, three and a half times more likely to have heart failure than those without. Wow. The American Liver Foundation says that 100 million Americans have fatty liver, and that means a lot of us are at risk. You know, we just throw everything at our liver. And it's expected to take care of it. The cholesterol, the alcohol, toxins, Tylenol, statins, cigarettes, all of that stuff. Which is why so many people have sluggish, fatty liver. that makes us gain weight, lose energy. For decades now, your liver has helped you with over 500 key functions every single day. It's time you help your liver. And there is a solution. It's liver health formula. It's an all-natural supplement. Contains 12 clinically proven botanicals that will help recharge and protect your liver. It's manufactured right here in the United States. It's approved by American doctors. And you could try Liver Health Formula and get a free bottle of nano-powered omega-3 to help your heart be healthy. Try Liver Health Formula by going to getliverhelp.com slash pat. Getliverhelp.com slash pat. Claim your free bonus gift. That's getliverhelp.com slash pat. This is Pat Gray Unleashed. So Americans' view of federal income taxes hit a two-decade low with 6 in 10 saying they're paying too much. How is that possible? (laughs) How is it only 6 in 10 people? How can only 60% of Americans say they're paying too much in federal income tax? Uh, What? The rest are like, I don't really care. I don't pay that much. (laughs) Are you kidding me? (laughs) So these are Americans. Who are these people that are okay with how much the federal (laughs) government takes from you? So 60%, 6 in 10, you said? Yeah. Um, are upset. Y- yes. So they want to be freeloaders and, and live in the society and keep yeah, its benefits right. without paying in. Okay. Right. Hmm. Or maybe they just want to pay their fair share, which is about 10%, 12% maybe. Right. I mean, that's one thing Herman, 10, Cain, Herman Cain used to say, right? The 999. Yeah, 999. Like, you know, if 10% is enough for God, <clears throat> yep. it's good enough for God, it should be good enough for the government. Yes. But the government thinks it's God and therefore... Oh, my gosh. Help us. So the Gallup poll released uh, last Friday showed 60% of respondents believe the amount of federal income tax they pay is too high. That's the most since 2001. 36% said they pay about the right amount. (laughs) Mm. (laughs) Really? That's incredible to me. (laughs) Those must be the people who are at the bottom rung paying the lowest amount of taxes possible and it's the you know five or ten percent of American taxpayers who pay ninety to ninety five percent of the tax burden, and the other thirty six percent are like, yeah, I don't pay that much. Well, yeah, because the rest of us are paying it all. You're welcome. More people said they pay too much in income tax <clears throat> than the right amount in most years that Gallup has asked the question. But the difference between the percentage who chose each of the options has not been quite this large. Pollsters also found 46% said the income tax uh, that they pay 
that they'll have to pay this year is fair. The lowest uh, since 1999. 46% said it's fair. Just more than half said it's not fair. Uh, that's And that's the most in the history of the poll. I, I, I don't understand how people are okay with the amount of taxes we have to pay in this country. Gallup said the last time that Americans were so critical of federal income taxes came right before President George W. Bush signed his tax cut law into effect. Income taxes have not significantly risen for low- and middle-income ta- uh, Americans, Americans since then, but wealthy Americans and companies have seen their taxes rise during Obama and Biden administrations. Hmm. Respondents overall indicated that they believe that the federal income tax is the worst or least fair tax that they pay. Well, by far. Are you kidding me? <laughs> That's immoral, man. Just more than a third said the federal income tax is the worst, a 14-point increase from the 20% who said so last time they asked the question. The tax previously considered the worst, local property tax. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, I'd have a tough time choosing which is worse. Welcome to Texas. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. The local property tax is... Don't even get me started on but that. But you I don't pay an income right tax, Pat. <laughs> yeah, right. I know. <laughs> I know. Oh, God. Uh, but the people thinking local property tax was the worst fell from 35% in 2005 to 29%. Who choose, who chose it now? I, You know, I, I'd put them tied. Local property tax and federal income tax. Tied for the worst. I'm telling you, man, those two taxes are absolutely outrageous. Immoral. 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 Because yep. they are taxing your ability to earn a living. Yep. That's wrong. Yep. And they're saying you never really own your property. Right. We do. You're basically right. paying rent every year to the government <laughs> to in order to stay on your in your house. Yes, exactly. Uh, so That's exactly get right. rid of both of those. You know what? Screw it. Bring back tariffs. Whatever. You know, this is because a national Rather sales than tax. Income tax? Yes. A national sales tax is the way to go. Uh, a fair tax, absolutely. Mm. You have to, of course, make sure you constitutionally eliminate the income tax. You got to take it up with your state legislatures about. I don't even want to talk about fair tax. tax until you do that. Right, right. When sure. you take that step, then talk yeah. to me about about the fair tax. And the, the way it was originally proposed, I think it was like a, it was a trigger. You know, you pass this, and then that one, yeah. or something. I forget. But mm-hmm. anyway. I mean, then you are then 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 it's in your hands. You what? are making the decision to spend money and get taxed. I mean, if if the Russians can get by on a thirteen percent tax, how is it that the United States of America can't? You've got a communist country that does a thirteen percent flat tax. What? I, how is it that we're paying forty percent in some cases? Ah. Uh, it's outrageous. Congratulations to Karl Marx and his progressive tax taking hold. <laughs> uh, yeah. Curveball here. over here. Here. Crazy. Didn't see that one coming, did you? <laughs> 20th century scholars. <laughs> and yet, here we are. Isn't it great? It's a great place to be. Oh, it feels good. I'm loving it. Who else was it that was in a battle? Was it Was it Georgia? The nation Georgia. Yeah. In a battle with Russia, they were trying to get the lowest flat tax uh, going in that area. And so Russia, I think Russia had a 15% that they lowered to 13. One of the two lowered it first and the other lowered it right after. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm looking up the lowest income tax among nations. Uh, wow. Oh, 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 my gosh. I'm moving. I'm just letting you know right now. Lowest income tax. Well, there is. are. This is just a. Okay, here we go. So I've got 14 <laughs> options. You ready? All right. Okay, I, this isn't laid out very well, but it says there are 14 countries with zero income tax and four offer citizenship or residence permits f- by wow. investment. You don't even have to move there. Wow. You just have to invest there. Wow. Uh, among the countries with the lowest tax rates in the world are Malta, Cyprus, Andorra, Montenegro, and Singapore. Aside from zero income tax, and, pop up. <laughs> Aside from zero income tax in Antigua and Barbados, uh, Barbuda, right? Uh, let's see. Individuals are also free from paying taxes on wealth, capital gains, and inheritance. Jeez. Suddenly, I like the beach. Wow. Foreigners can obtain wow. Malta or Cyprus residency and register a company to optimize their taxes without having to live there for most of the year. Nice. <clears throat> huh. 
<clears throat> Before choosing the country for tax optimization, check if your primary country of residence has a double tax treaty with the country you want to move to or open a business. This is from uh, immigrantinvest.com. Maybe I'll post this on Twitter so you guys can take a look and see if uh, moving to an island nation is right for you. <laughs> My gosh. That's amazing. We, we, I mean, we are... Uh, <clears throat> We're out of control in oh, this yeah. country. And, and and keep in mind, what's the big issue that a week from tomorrow, uh, a week from Thursday, we're supposed to hit the debt ceiling because they don't have enough money coming in? And they're like, oh, we're going to have to raise taxes. And mm -hmm. thankfully, McCarthy for now is saying that's a non-starter. And it better remain that way, Speaker McCarthy. Yes, please. Don't be raising. Don't you dare raise. And Biden keeps mentioning it, too. Yeah. They won't even consider raising <laughs> but he won't actually say the word. He won't say it. I mean, how many times have we heard him right. start that sentence and then not finish it? Well, then he'll say, raise revenues. Right. Yeah. Shut up. Why don't you call it what it is if you're so, you know, married to the idea? The federal If you love it so government. much, why don't you marry it? <laughs> why don't you marry it? it? I, I swear, <laughs> they, they produce nothing, the government. They just leech right. off of you. Yes. They depend on your hard work and you playing by the rules. Mm-hmm. In order to get by, you know what? They don't play by the rules. Why the hell should we anymore? Seriously, it's gotten to that point. I'm so frustrated as an American citizen. It Why the hell do we pay taxes anymore? It's it's. I'm not advocating that you stop paying your taxes, <clears throat> but I'm telling you, it sure well, as hell is tempting. You wind up in jail if you do. So. Whatever. At least they'll pay me. They'll, they'll feed me, right? <laughs> they'll feed me in jail. They will. That's I'll give good. you three squares. Because John Kerry's out there trying mm -hmm. to take all of our food. If I can avoid eating bugs and put me in prison, whatever. <laughs> Ugh. Just over this. Crap. <laughs> Did another word almost slip out there? Wow. I told you, Lance. Yeah, man. I told you, Lance. Today's the day. <laughs> Today's the uh, day. Ah, <laughs> uh, man. So, uh, we've got all this talk of the debt ceiling and uh -huh. the 14th Amendment uh -huh. and all of that. Uh, they talked to Lawrence Tribe at the Gazette. Which Gazette is this? The Harvard Gazette. It's like the student newspaper. I okay. Yeah. What does the 14th Amendment say about the nation's debt? Lawrence Tribe says, uh, the text of the 14th Amendment is explicit. Section 4, uh, I think we read this on Glenn's show yesterday. Section, oh, did you really? Section, yeah. Section oh. 4 of the 14th Amendment says, the validity of the public debt of the United States authorized by law, including debts incurred for payment of pensions and bounties for services in suppressing insurrection or rebellion, shall not be questioned. Okay? So if you incur debt mm -hmm. fighting an insurrection then you you don't even ask about it. You just got to incur that debt. This is a guarantee that the U.S. will always be good for its debts, for all its debts, period. <laughs> so how can a law passed by Congress in 1917 establishing a debt ceiling decide which debts are valid and should be paid and which are less valid and can be put off? Uh, Tribe says, in my view, a debt ceiling law can't legitimately do that. But there's a catch. By leaving that law in place and threatening for the first time ever not to raise the ceiling as needed to pay all the debts. What do you mean threatening for the first time ever? They threaten it every time. I know. It is threatened every time. Mm -hmm. This is the dance that is done every time the debt ceiling deadline nears. Well, what if we don't raise it? And every single time, they do. We are such a wealthy nation, blessed by God with so many incredible natural resources and great people. Mm -hmm. And this country is like, the government is like a lottery winner. They, they get all of these blessings, and yet we, we, we just somehow can't manage to balance a freaking budget and puts ourselves in this position we can't all even the imagine, time. We can't even manage... To have a budget. Yes. We haven't had a budget since 2009. <laughs> and maybe even before that. It might have been 2008, uh, the last budget we had. Yeah. We, I, right. I don't think since Obama got into office, there's, and ever since, that we've even had a budget. Yeah. We, we have these continuing resolutions, which continually raise the debt ceiling. There really <laughs> isn't a debt ceiling. Because every time we get near it, they just push it up again. Yeah, and this 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 really tortured argument for the Fourteenth Amendment. They've, yeah, no, they, man. They, they, oh, it's they tried to make it in the past. Yeah, uh, they 
Even Jay Carney talked about it. Listen to this. 2013. I mean, I'm not sure what this is when it comes... This is Obama's spokesman. Congress has to vote to raise the debt ceiling. The president can't raise it by himself. Thank you. Uh, people have talked Thank about uh, the 14th Amendment, and this right. administration does not so believe they talked about it back that then. the 14th Amendment gives the power to ignore the debt ceiling. Ta -da! And even if the president could ignore the debt ceiling... <laughs> Uh, the fact that the fact that there is significant significant controversy around the president's authority to act unilaterally means that it would uh. be not be a credible alternative to oh my gosh. The ceiling, okay that uh, and would not be taken seriously uh, by the global economy and markets okay i mean that is that, that, that is the obama administration yeah. restricting itself yes unbelievable and this guy can't even do that this the, he is so much worse than obama boy and the other takeaway from that is wow my goodness there actually used to be someone coherent in that yeah. position as press yeah. secretary. Yeah, as much as I disliked Jay <laughs> Carney. Know. Oh my gosh. He was a godsend <laughs> compared to what we have now. Yep. <laughs> All right, uh, we've got overtime coming up. <laughs> we'll see you then. And then, of course, uh, tomorrow with uh, this Jeffy. This is Pat Gray, Unleashed.